Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us dis discuss about uh, neutropenia and neutropenia related sepsis. We know that blood is produced in bone marrow from blood stem cells. Then uh, it forms into myeloid stem cells and lymphoid stem cells. In myeloid stem cells, you can get uh, RBCs, platelets, and granulocytes. In granulocytes, we have eosinophils, basophils, and neutrophils. Other side, lymphoblast, uh, uh, lymphoid tissue, lymphoblast, plasma cells, T lymphocytes, uh, killer cells. So many other cells are formed. B lymphocytes, all these things are formed. So basically, uh, there are different functions like RBC carry, uh, oxygen, and other uh, glucose. All these things. Platelets help in. Uh, forming uh, coagulation uh, in uh, or prevents bleeding. Uh, eosinophils have got, uh, eosinophils, basophils have got uh, different actions. But neutrophils, if you take, the major action of neutrophil is to protect our body from various types of infections by producing inflammatory response against that pathogen. Sometimes um, it may be against a bacteria, virus or uh, uh, some other uh, patho pathogen which can produce an illness. Sometimes there will be dysregulated mechanism and that produces uh, immune mediated disorders. That is a different that is a different spectrum of the disease where lymphocytes, neutrophils all will be participated will be participating. So uh, that is immune dysregulated uh, syndromes like uh, rheumatoid arthritis, SLE all these things. But whereas in infection, when there is an infection, these neutrophils will try to protect from uh, uh, that type of infections uh, and it protects the body from these infections. So activated neutrophils will produce various actions against immune uh, mediated injuries or uh, infectious diseases. So here it can uh, kill the bacteria, virus or uh, fungus like that. Uh, there are different mechanisms like phagocytosis or uh, fibroblast, endothelial cells, dendritic cells, macrophages. Different types of cells are formed from these neutrophils and uh, try to uh, neutralize these pathogens in our body. So when the neutrophil counts are reduced, it produces reduction in our total body immunity. So there are three important mechanisms by which neutrophil count can reduce. We call it as neutropenia. Low neutrophil production from the bone marrow. It can be due to bone marrow failure, secondary to drug induced problem, secondary to infections, secondary to nutritional defi deficiency like vitamin B12, folic acid and all. Or it can be marrow infiltration. Second mechanism is redistribution of circulating neutrophils to the vascular endothelium. This is called as marginization. It can be that uh, neutrophils can be uh, destroyed in circulation or in spleen. Immune destruction, it can be drug induced immune destruction or autoimmune diseases which produce uh, uh, destruction of RBCs, WBCs or platelets. Here. Uh, if the WBCs are distracted by autoimmune diseases, then it can also uh, produce deficiency in the neutrophil count. It can be categorized into three major groups, mild, moderate, severe. If absolute neutrophil count more than 1000 and less than 1500, it is mild. If it is more than 500 and less than 1000, it is moderate. It is less than 500, it is severe. In severe neutropenia, another condition is egg granulocytosis. Egg granulocytosis means granulocytes are nil, where absolute neutrophil count can be less than 200. That is something like uh, absolute deficiency of neutrophil. Even if uh, it is less than 200, it is there is no actual function for this type of neutrophils because numbers are very, very low. So, the defensive mechanism is absolutely zero. Now, there are various causes for uh, neutropenia. 
TB, typhoid, brucellosis, measles, infectious mononucleosis, viral hepatitis, leishmaniasis, vi many viral fevers, HIV, uh, immune disorders like SLE, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, directly uh, autoimmune neutropenia itself can present without any uh, secondary diseases like SLE or RA. And invasion of bone marrow, myelofibrosis, nutritional deficiency like B12, folic acid, benign familial neutropenia, chronic benign neutropenia of childhood, chronic idiopathic neutropenia, neutropenia associated with uh, metabolic disorders, neutropenia due to increased marginalization. So, so many disorders can reduce the uh, neutrophil count in our blood. Now, the drugs if you take, main drugs are penicillamine, naproxen, that is an anaside, chloroquine, antimalarial drug, methotrexate, anti-rheumatoid drug, carbamazole, propyl thioracil, antithyroid drugs, phenytoin, sodium valproate, carbamazepine, amitriptyline, all are anti-epileptic drugs, captopril, enlapril, nifedipine, anti-hypertensive drugs, and antibiotics like penicillin, cephalosporin, sulfadoxin, uh, pyrimethamine, dapsone, zidovudin. So many drugs can produce neutropenia. So the, this list is no, this list is not complete. There are many other drugs which can also produce neutropenia. Now there are something called as intrinsic defects. We will not go to that condition now because uh, these conditions are very very rare. But you should remember the names of these intrinsic conditions. Uh, because uh, they are rare conditions, if you are not getting any other cause for neutropenia, then these are the causes. But the commonest cause is always viral infection. So, you see any viral fever, you can see the counts are slightly reduced. In some viral fever, it will be completely uh, uh, towards the lower uh, side of the normal value. Now, clinically significant neutrophil counts, more than 1500, it is taken as normal. Even when you have a uh, neutrophil count 4000 to 11000, if it is less than 4000 also, patient may not have any clinical features because of neutropenia. So, more than 1500, it is normal. 1000 to 1500, less chance for infection, but we have to be very careful. 500 to 1000, there is a possibility of infection. So, this type of patients should be isolated. This is called as reverse isolation. Less than 500, high chance of infection, few clinical signs of infection can be present and patients should be treated with IV antibiotic to prevent infection. Less than 200, the inflammatory process will be absent. This is a problem in neutropenic patients. So normally when we get some infection, we have fever, uh, lymphadenopathy, uh, uh, hepatosplenomegaly. Like that, uh, uh, clinical features of infection will be there when our neutrophil counts are normal. But when the neutrophil counts are absolutely zero or reduced, there is no chance for inflammation. Infection is there, but against that infection, body is not trying to do anything because there is no inflammatory cells formed in the, bo in the body. So, inflammatory response is nil in this type of patients. So, these patients may be clinically stable. So, when the patient comes with infection, they may not have fever, they may not have toxicity. But when you are evaluating, you can see that the patient is having uh, features of sepsis. So, when we get a neutropenic patient in emergency room, uh, we have to see whether the patient is uh, uh, ill or febrile. If the patient is ill or febrile, directly we can start antibiotic. Even otherwise, if the neutrophil counts are very, very low, we have to see, uh, to prevent infection, we have to give antibiotics. So, when we are thinking about antibiotics, pseudomonas is one of the most important uh, problem in uh, neutropenia. So, we have to take care of that. So, all patients who is having uh, neutropenia, we have to evaluate for uh, causes for neutropenia. You have to see whether any infections are there. You can see any uh, B12 deficiency is there or not, any, any drugs patient is taking which can produce bone marrow suppression and uh, ultimately if we are not able to find out any cause, we have to do bone marrow study also. And many neutropenias, whether it is uh, infection induced or uh, drug induced, once that infection is over, bone marrow recovery is fast. So, bone marrow study is the gold standard study in uh, neutropenia. 
which is uh, which is not getting corrected uh, within one or two weeks because most of the infections uh, within one week uh, most of the viral infections within one week the uh, bone marrow recovery can occur but bacterial infection after treatment bone marrow recovery can occur but in tuberculosis and all there may be chance there there can be chance of permanent damage to bone marrow so we have to be very careful some uh, chronic infection chronic inflammation permanent bone bone marrow uh, uh, damage can occur so in the, all these conditions where the patient is not recovering from neutropenia we have to always go for a bone marrow study bone marrow neutrophil production is considered to be adequate if the circulate uh, cellularity and maturation of the neutrophil series is normal or increased reduced bone marrow cellularity or myeloid arrest at the myelocyte or metamyelocyte stage indicates decreased bone marrow ability so we have to do the bone marrow and see whether the response is increased or response is reduced if there is a peripheral destruction of uh, wbc then bone marrow production will be more if the bone marrow itself is having problem then the production will be very very low sometimes you can see myelofibrosis or hot spots various uh, things are there in bone marrow study but we will not be discussing all this now now once you diagnose neutropenia in emergency room or in icu we have to evaluate the cause for the neutropenia if there is an offending drug stop it if there is an infection uh, if if it is a viral infection give some time to recovery if it is a bacterial infection always try to treat the patient with antibiotic but we have to prevent infection if the uh, neutrophil counts are very very low less than 500 and all we have to try to prevent the infection so oral hygiene maintenance is very very important oral antifungal agents chlorhexidine mouthwash has to be given because that is a Uh, focus of infection in many patients uh, we can give bactrim dsd that is trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole tablet uh, double strength tablet can be given bd bactrim ds bd whenever patient come with sepsis high degree fever hypotension all these things we have to think about severe infection due to uh, organism like pseudomonas mrsa methicillin resistant staphylococcal aureus so we have to prevent this infections if the patient is not having um, a uh, like a infectious uh, uh, problem and if the counts are very very low we have to give preventive antibiotic ceftazidime is one of the most important drug which can pre- prevent pseudomonas infection but if there is an infection then go for a higher antibiotic like piperacillin tazobactam vancomycin is given to cover the mrsa and we can give even colony stimulating factor commonly colony stimulate colony stimulating factors are mainly useful in drug induced neutropenia so we can give filgrastim 5 microgram per kg per day subcutaneous infection this is mainly given in drug induced neutropenia so uh, we can give for 14 days up to 14 days we can give and uh, continue until the absolute neutrophil count more than 10000 so we can continue the uh, colony stimulating factor which try to increase the production of uh, uh, bone marrow uh, production so it can uh, maintain the uh, levels of neutropenia in a neutropenic patient but this is mainly useful in uh, drug induced neutropenia other neutropenias the uh, uh, response is not very good and in patients who is having uh, leukemias with neutropenia try to uh, uh, some some uh, time during the uh, treatment sometimes patient can develop neutropenia in that type of patients we have to be very careful in using this drug and it is not recommended also there so febrile neutropenia uh, counts has to be taken blood culture has to be taken at least two uh, blood cultures from different sites has to be taken we have to document any infection we have to think about fungal infection opportunistic infection and always try to treat for uh, uh, pseudomonas and mrsa for pseudomonas we can give ceftazidim or piperacillin tazobactam uh, for other uh, mrsa we can give um, vancomycin then uh, pcp pneumonia prevention we can give bactrim ds and antifungal 
I, uh, medication also should be given in some patients who is not responding to antibiotics. So these are the basic things we have to uh, give from emergency room. And whenever patient is having neutropenia and not having infection at the time of an admission, we have to always uh, do reverse isolation for the patient. Reverse isolation means patient is uh, uh, isolated from other patients because uh, this patient is prone to get infection from other patients. So they have to be isolated from other patients. So we have discussed about neutropenia, one of the important clinical problem in emergency room, especially when we have a uh, large cancer unit. Uh, because many patients who is having malignancy, they can have neutropenia either because of drug induced neutropenia or in, uh, by a malignancy induced neutropenia or by uh, infiltration of uh, uh, bone marrow by cancer cells. So these type of problems are very, very common in uh, uh, cancer center, uh, mainly in ca cancer center associated hospital. So these patients can present with neutropenia or neutropenia induced infections. So we have to be very careful uh, when we are dealing this type of patients. Uh, reverse isolation, uh, septazidim or bepresilin azobactam for uh, infections like pseudomonas, vancomycin for uh, MRSA, then uh, Bactrim DS that is uh, uh, sulfur drug to prevent PCP infections, antifungal medication, all these things should be given. Oral hygiene is also very, very important in this type of patients. Thank you.